Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Krause. Man, if uh, people could hear what you sounded like before we started, it's like a slight switch, man. You are a true performer <laughs> through and through. <laughs> you are a true Pay no per- attention to that narco left behind the curtain. <laughs> you you are truly, truly a professional. <laughs> I aim to entertain and impress and possibly befuddle. I don't know. We'll see how the day takes us. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm befuddled, but that's just <laughs> me normal. <laughs> <laughs> we have another slew of questions from our patrons over at patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, and our YouTube members. Indeed we do. So why waste any more time? Why not just go ahead and get into it? Starting off with this one from Alvamon or you can... Weird species swap question. What do you think Sonic and his friends, Team Rose, Team Dark, the Chaotix and Restoration, etc., would be like personality-wise if they were Zeddy? Assuming that the Zeddy are jerks is a racial trait, if we're going to go D&D on this. Mm. You know, orcs, orcs is bad. Zeddy is mean. Even D&D then... doesn't do that anymore, but, you know. No? Well, good for them. <laughs> I guess it's lazy, but... Uh... Yes. We we don't really have a wide swath to pull from in terms of data. No. When in terms of SETI. So uh mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. going off that, it almost feels like a slight retread of the anti versions, but instead of just straight up, you know, this is the antithesis, this is the flip, it's just who are they and what would they be like if they were mean? Yeah. So, you know, Sonic would be, you know, still the carefree adventure seeking uh fun guy but he enjoys stomping on people in the process he's completely callous he will go to great lengths just to uh entertain himself and tails would be i don't know kind of condescendingly intelligent like yeah he figured it out an hour ago keep up <laughs> he can fly can you no that sounds like a personal limitation to him mm. knuckles would be largely the same, just meaner about it, I guess. Punch things. <laughs> punch things real good. More threatening, yeah. Shadow would have a longer tail. I was uh, going to say, Shadow would be identical. No difference. <laughs> <laughs> uh, might be fun to do a complete flip for the Chaotix and instead of solving crimes, they commit crimes <laughs> for funsies. <laughs> Rouge might be more vain. Yeah, I mean, she's already a thief. She's already a duplicious spy. Yeah. yeah. She serves the greater good for her own benefits. Oh, so... she would she would serve her own benefit for the greater bad. And now I'm trying to imagine a uh, Zeddy version of Omega and all I wind up is with like a steampunk Mecha Zavok. <laughs> I mean, that sounds pretty awesome, to be fair. But he would also be the same. He wouldn't have any, any, he wouldn't be any different. Yeah, I mean, maybe less focus on Eggman's robots and just tear everything down. (laughs) Tangle is the same. It's just her energy causes more chaos. Uh, She knows she causes chaos, but she does it on purpose. Yeah. She loves mayhem. Yes, yes, yes. I guess we have to do the zone cop route. Everybody's got a Z name, so you got your Zonic, your Zales, your Zangle, <laughs> your Shadow. Some of them are terrible. Like, hold on, Zooj. Yeah, Zooj. Zisper. It's terrible. You still call them Knuckles because the Z is silent, but still. <laughs> Maybe you put the Z at the end for his name. <laughs> Knuckles. <laughs> there you go. Or maybe he just sticks with the knuckles, and every time you laugh at it, he gives it, uses it as excuse to punch you. Yeah, Zenuckles, yeah. that's not a real pow. <laughs> These are just the zone cops. Yes, it's true. It's, uh, hmm. Anybody else who can think of Whisper Zeddy is just hmm. Pop, pop, watching people drop. <laughs> yeah, uh, she'd actually go through with killing people. <laughs> like, she doesn't have a defined target. It's just whoever happens to walk in front of her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zeddy Starline is just Starline. <laughs> <laughs> no difference. 
Zuff and Zumble. <laughs> Again, not particularly a great deal of difference. No, no, not really. It would be Zegman. <laughs> Maybe he would be a little less with the lasers and incendiaries and more blunt projectiles. He's launching multiple wrecking balls out of giant cannons, but... <laughs> be pretty funny yeah there's a lot of possibilities with this one um amy we forget about amy i don't know maybe go with uh her old characterization more obsessed with zonic maybe or maybe lean full oni into her where you know she won't start nothing but if you start something she will end it true big old pico pico cudgel yeah cream and cheese I guess cheese might be a wisp instead of a chow. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. That or it's just a very small, odd zetty. <laughs> true, true. Cream is... Uh, uh, just a brat. Yeah. You, know, you will mind your manners or she will mind you. Pretty much. Pinkies up or she'll bite them off. <laughs> Sit and enjoy your crumpets, damn it! What about Big? Or as I like to call him, Zig. Mm-hmm. Move Zig for great justice. <laughs> uh, he's sitting there fishing, but it's solely to depopulate the ocean. <laughs> he doesn't fish with a rod. He just jumps in and just catches them with his bare hands. Strangles each fish individually. That's right. That's right. <laughs> there we go. He punches the fish, yes. I want to see the light leave their eyes. <laughs> I want to watch them struggle. <laughs> uh, well, I got dark fast. Let's move on. Well, yeah. I mean, hey, you know, it's the Zeddy. They're supposed to be evil, apparently. So <laughs> with a sample size of six. <laughs> Here's one from Andrew D. In the article for Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine in the Encyclopedia, a factoid titled Everything is Canon states that the beans made a surprise return in Sonic Mania. Is this more of a real world return? Or is this stating that the game is actually canon? Can you tell us with confidence which games are non-canon? We already know of Sonic Chronicles, Wacko Wacko Sonic Patrol Car, Sega Sonic Cosmo Fighter, and all the mobile games, unless any of those have changed to now be canon. Uh, given my position, I don't want to start trotting out too much hard info right now, but I, I meant that more as a real-world thing. Hey, you remember this gimmick from this one Puyo Puyo Pop cash-in? Well, here it is again in Mania as an Easter egg. Well, not an Easter egg, as a uh, reference call. Yeah. Callback. Isn't that fun? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you can't really say with authority that Mean Bean Machine is truly canon, considering it's got a lot of Adventures of elements that are not canon. Yeah. I don't think it's part of the lineup, but... That is to be determined by the larger group. Unofficially, I would say it is. It is unofficially. It is a spinoff. It is a fun spinoff, and it's just there. So, yeah. Good luck fitting it on your timeline. Here's one from Batman 69 Lol. What movies do you think would make a good ongoing comic book series? Hmm. I'd say Back to the Future, but they already did that. This Marvel movies might make for a decent comic. Oh, uh, hmm. I, I don't think so. Nah. No. Nah. nah. No. That would be kind of silly. I don't know. Silly. It's like a lot of the movies. God, when was the last time I actually sat down and watched a movie? A lot of the movies um, nowadays are already based on like books or other things. Yeah. <laughs> like this, right? um, They're all adaptations. They have been for like the last 20, 25 years. Or they're such obvious franchise bait that I almost feel like I'm falling for the trap. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of appreciate movies that tell their story and they're done. And, like, there is room to explore, sure, but not everything has to be an ongoing series. Not everything has to be extrapolated or Mm -hmm. continued. That being said kind of by the nature of the beast i almost feel like the john wick franchise could could be be expanded upon it'd be interesting Hmm. like not necessarily following john wick himself but other assassins within the 
hilariously convoluted nonsense society yeah. that the films have built up. I'm a little surprised there was never an ongoing comic of uh, Pacific Rim that I know of. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Just the one movie. Weird. <laughs> hmm. I don't know, man. There's like this Superman guy. The movies were okay. I think he'd make a pretty good comic. Hmm. I don't know. It's also hard to say because a lot of the movies that are just, you know, standalone movies right. that they aren't part of a franchise are like romantic comedies or just comedies or it's really hard because I, again, it's been a long time since I've gone to the theater, just watched a movie, but I'm having a hard time of thinking of anything that wasn't part of some grander multimedia attempt. And the ones that weren't, or, you know, an actual art film that's trying to use the medium to tell a story and make a point. Yeah. They're self-contained. Mm -hmm. That's the story. They doesn't need to be the ongoing investigation of the narrative. They told their story. It's done. It's complete. Yeah. There are two types of movies now. The art house film, independent, small budget or no budget film. And then there are the giant blockbuster franchises. That's pretty much it. There's no in-betweens anymore. And it's uh, sad. Video games have kind of become the same way. There's very few, quote-unquote, double-A games released anymore. It's all either small indies or big, triple-A, massive productions. And it's like, come on, man. Even Sonic's like triple-A now, at least triple-A price. <laughs> <laughs> Again, after a decade of not. I don't know. I think there's we're seeing a growth in the indie market to the stuff that would be like double a you know, we are seeing more yeah. robust stuff yeah we're seeing it kind of move in that direction luckily but then it, by the time they get big enough then the really big companies just come in and buy them mm. so it's like uh okay we <laughs> we oui. oui, oui, oui. yay consolidation it's great it's not here's a question from cardio I'm a huge fan of most of the robotic character archetypes in the Sonic franchise. However, my absolute favorite character in the whole setting is E-102 Gamma and his short story in SA-1. My question for you is that if you were given the reins to alter Gamma's story and potentially continue it past SA-1 in a similar vein as to how the Archie comics handled him, what would you do with him? Would you allow him to be more involved in stories and have more interactions with the cast of characters available at your disposal? That's kind of ties back to what we were just talking about. I like Gamma's story as it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, me too. The, whole re the only reason why he was still around in the Archie continuity is that the adaptation of the adventure arc was so loose. And again, I don't lay that at the feet of anybody on Archie's side. That was a mess. But it's just, it was an unresolved uh, plot point. It's kind of like when uh, Team Four Star did their dragon ball z abridged season three kai wrap up and at the very end android 16 walks through and goes by the way i didn't die in this version because they kind of forgot <laughs> to cover that point whoops <laughs> so with with gamma's sa1 story it's perfect as it is he you know has his initial goal he has his doubts he breaks away. He becomes this lone Ronin bot hunting down his own kind to liberate the animals within and then has his fatal final fatal duel with his big brother aboard the crashed egg carry. That's it, man. Yeah, that is the pinnacle. And then you have the tragedy of the legacy being mined with the E1000s and Chaos Gamma. You know, that's robbing the grave and besmirching what came before and i wish that was investigated more that's neat but gamma himself is done and i like it that way yeah i think it would be interesting to see like maybe a retelling through a remake like everyone's like talking about an sa1 remake been talking about that for mm -hmm. a while i think it would be interesting to uh see that story revisited a bit you know bring the fidelity up don't change any of the plot points or anything. Just kind of, you know, refine it and make it, make it really shine, I think. So, yeah, 
you have more robust tools for in-game cinematics now, but right. Just that one moment where, you know, he's done with his mission. Yep. You know, the only E100 left is him. And that realization is left to hang there for a minute. Yep. And you're like, oh, wait, what does that mean for you? And then Beta Mark II flies by, and you're like, oh, okay, good. We don't have to address that problem. Go shoot the other robot. <laughs> and, and God, is Beta Mark II just freaking cool looking and a cool fight anyway. Yep. And then Gamma limping away, having been ravaged by the battle, and then just takes a knee and self destructs. Just, ah! And then it comes full circle because the, the birds are free and the family is reunited. So it's concluded. It's done. That's all you need. And just, ah, I like it. It's good. Yep. Yep. It's pretty well done. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy with it. I don't think we need to see, I don't think we need to see more of it really in terms of expanding upon like gamma, you know, we got Omega now. Omega's good. I still want to do something with Chaos Gamma, but that's because I'm a turbo nerd. Well, I mean, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Here's a question from Chaos Sonic 1. While I've not read Sonic 50 yet at the time of posting this question, who would win in the no-holds-barred grudge match between Surge and Scourge? You constantly say that they would go all out and to kill, but you never stated the winner. And no, don't say us for watching it beyond the fourth wall. <laughs> Uh, man, this is going to be some obnoxious power level scaling nonsense, <laughs> but as they are, since we've last seen them, I would argue Scourge by virtue of what Archie Sonic achieved in terms of feats versus where Surge is now in learning how to best employ her abilities, Scourge might come out ahead. He wouldn't be, you know, walking away from it. He might be missing an eye, but he would, I think he could clinch the win right now, but give Surge some time to get a few more fights under her belt and really understand what she can do. And then she's going to, she would be able to surpass. Obviously the actual winner is Goku. <laughs> Here's a question from Chicken Noodles. The Encyclopedia book says deep dive into the extensive lore and extensive detail of each game in Sonic's ever-expanding universe. And Boom, despite being another universe, is in the book. Is Boom part of the Sonic universe slash multiverse then, as the games in the book are? I like to think of it as part of the multiverse. A whole other branch of reality that will never be seen again because it's been retired. But that's how I interpret it. Hmm. I wish we saw it again. I miss it. I'm so yeah. sad. Well, somewhere out there. Here's a question from End to Bend. So with our first look at Witch Cart and the Squad in the Tales special, I was wondering, what would they be like in the mainline IDW series where they'd show up in it? It'd be fun having another human antagonist around, and I feel she and the gang have the potential to be an interesting quasi-recurring group of enemies. Maybe. I like them in classic, though, because if you've read the Tales special, and you've seen Aaron's artwork. It's they're basically Looney Tunes villains, and I love it. They're just fun in the more lighthearted classic setting. And I kind of feel like that's where they belong. That fits. That's nice. I like that. If they were to come into modern, they would get, you know, an update in design, and I think by the very nature of modern, they'd have to have an upscaling in threat level. You know, potential danger and general threateningness. Maybe not necessarily any further than rough and tumble, but they they get that little bit of edge to them. And right now, mostly because the tail special is fresh in my head, I don't really want that. I I like them being the funny, goofy villains in classic right now because we have villains in modern. Now we've got our rough and tumble. We've got mimic. We've got Clutch, who's going to be doing something in the background. We've got side villains. If we were going to update anybody and bring them to modern, I'd rather do the hooligans first, because I feel like they're already geared towards that. Yeah, although, I mean, they're also serving the goofy villain role for classic, they are, though. They are. So. And we've got the Babylon Rogues, mm -hmm. you know, for semi-lighthearted, not into the world, but still going to wreck your day 
antagonists that I think we're good. I don't think we need anything else at the moment, personally. Yeah, I'd like to see the, ba- see the Babylon rogues more, maybe expand them a bit, make them, you know, a threat <laughs> for at least a, an arc or something. I don't know. Yeah, I'd like to see them do something yes. again. Yes, absolutely. Here's a question from Excel Edge. To celebrate Sage joining the family, Mama Robotnik, Mombot, Mecca, Eve, and Breezy take her out for a good old-fashioned Robotnik girls' night out. What shenanigans do they get up to? Oh, Lord. <laughs> that is that is an absolutely horrifying thought. Uh-huh. I mean, just having Mama Robotnik and Mombot in the same vicinity is terrifying because they're not going to agree to anything. They're not going to cooperate. They're both going to try to rule the roost, and that's going to level city blocks. Eggman's two moms. Yeah, yeah mm. <laughs> Not going to go well. And the others are going to encourage it because otherwise they're going to get nagged hardcore, and they don't want that. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I would imagine Mecha and Sage would get along pretty darn well. They're both loyal. They're both pretty reserved. They would see the antics unfolding and just kind of step back and say, all right, that's happening. Eve. Well, we didn't really get a lot of Eve. Maybe she just yeets herself back into space. I'm out. <laughs> I'm tired of this world. These mama robotics. <laughs> Perhaps I will go to another universe, create my own continuity. Yes. And Breezy is going to monetize it somehow. <laughs> I figured just Breezy was just going around constantly face palming. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe once she sees where things are going, she, you know, finds a way to telecast Mama Robotnik versus Mombot. And starts placing odds on it. That's right. (laughs) She has a low-scale kaiju fight going on downtown right now. Might as well make lemonade and sell that lemonade at a premium. That's right. (laughs) She knows what's up. (laughs) Oh, breezy. Here's a question from Happy Times. You were probably expecting this question at some point. How do you picture Boom Sage would have been like, and how is Boom Eggman as a dad? (laughs) Oh, uh, Boom Eggman is just a fawning, tripping over himself dad. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, he spoils her rotten and she just does not care. <laughs> like, Boom Sage is there because she has to be. And, like, deep down, you know, she does have feelings for Boom Dad. But, God, he's so cringy. She's optimized his daily plan three times over now, and he's thrown it out to throw her yet another surprise party. It's not even her birthday. She doesn't want a unicorn. She can't interact with the unicorn. Can we destroy Sonic now? Please. (laughs) Stop ending the fight midway through to show off your wallet photos. Who even carries wallets anymore? Dad, stop it. (laughs) Boom Sage is just the goth kid. Yeah. (laughs) Pretty much. Yeah. (laughs) I've had enough of your sass. Go to your room. Fine. She flies into the hard drive. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute. Which starts pumping out angry emo music. Go to your computer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, you're grounded. Get off your computer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, here's one from Kumo with induction pan. What sort of overpowered being would we get from a Sonic and Eggman fusion that combines the doctor's narcissism and genius with Sonic's physicality, speed, and tenacity? Assuming this character had an equal balance of personality traits between the two of them, what moral alignment would this new hedgehog have, and how dangerous would they be to the rest of the world? Uh, so basically you have Sonic Man with a mustache. Chaotic neutral. (laughs) At best. I would almost say lawful evil. Or, or, okay, I could see it going either way, yeah. Because he'll protect the world. He'll save everyone in the way that he thinks is right. Okay, yeah, okay, so he's like evil Superman then, got it. Yeah, he he's smarter than you, he knows what's best, and so he's going to enforce it. It's right. for your own good, man. Okay, And yeah. you try to stop him, and no, he's going to stomp you. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm feeling it. And what that's and whatever he can't do through natural raw talent, he will augment with various 
you know, Tony Stark esque accoutrement. Yeah, pretty much. It's a frightening it's thought. Terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Thalog of Sonic. No, I do not want. Although I kind of do, because it would be really interesting. <laughs> and we got a question from Mr. J. Fitz. This is probably stepping into Lost Hedgehog Tales territory, but I gotta ask, how would the pre-SGW run have concluded if it had not met its abrupt end during the events of the Mecha Sally arc? Would Sonic have finally settled down after defeating his enemies, or would it have concluded with him embarking on his next adventure, leaving us to wonder what lies ahead on the Blue Blur's next journey? Yeah, that's deep, deep into that territory. Uh, suffice to say, things were meant to be... Like I've said this before, the beginning of the Mecha Sally arc was supposed to be the lowest point for our heroes. And the story that followed would be the Freedom Fighters coming together stronger, better than before with their greatest triumph. We just didn't get on that upswing, you know? Yeah. So it would have been a resolution to most of the drama that had preceded it with a generally happy ending for most folks. And set up for the next arc, which would have been the culmination of the Freedom Fighters coming back together and getting everything back the way it should be. That will come to light eventually. I promise. Thank you very much for your patience. I know this has been an exceedingly long time in the making. Antoine's death was post-reboot, wasn't it? Nope, pre-reboot. Was it? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. <laughs> Would have dealt with that too, but uh, that's for later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, obviously, you hate Antoine and Sally because you killed them both off. So, except for the point where they're both alive. Mm, yeah, but you killed them off, so you hate them, mm, right? That's how yeah. that. That's how that. Where you killed the you killed the characters, so that means you hate them. Except they didn't even kill them. Well, you planned to. You plan to kill Antoine. Uh, you plan to kill Antoine. Yeah. You didn't actually kill Sally, but you tried by by roboticizing her because there's a diff there's no difference between death and roboticization apparently. It's so sad Uncle Chuck was dead for so many years. I know. <laughs> and Sonic's parents. Yeah. <laughs> they and were... that one time that the dead Sonic and dead Knuckles fought each other for like two issues and it was freaking glorious. Yeah, yeah, but they were dead, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, no potential there. Yeah, yep. <laughs> so sad Uncle Chuck died of Ligma. <laughs> Next question, I ain't falling for it. <laughs> I gotta blame chat for that one. Antoine was going to die, but he got better. Here's a question from Noni. Does Master Zeke's clothes actual clothes, or do they count as flesh ribbons? I don't know, and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> like, is he wearing a dress, or does she have, like, a weird tube sock of skin? You know, it's... Uh, no, Aesthetic! I don't, like <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> is Master Zeke wearing a tattered robe, or is that just old man hair? I, <laughs> it's aesthetic. It's like Coach Z. <laughs> Is he wearing a green bodysuit? Maybe. Is his body green? Maybe. <laughs> Either way, it's totally inappropriate. <laughs> uh, I, I like this one. Maybe it's hair and Zeke is an umber witch. <laughs> 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 the Dordley Sorks. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, and our last question is comes to us courtesy of Dove. Last question before we take a break, that is. Boomcast plus Silver doing a version of Jackass. Please have fun. <laughs> For some reason, I can, I can see this, oh, this so clearly in my head. I can see... I can totally see Sonic going, Hi, I'm Sonic the Hedgehog, and this is Jackass. Oh, yeah, this is a boom episode. Easy. Easy, yeah. Like, the whole thing is a plan by Dr. Eggman to trick them into destroying themselves yes. just for the YouTube clicks. Yes. Except they're getting so much attention, and people are so entertained by them that he gets jealous and wants to be in on it, too. Yes. So he starts doing the stupid pranks as well, except he has deadly arsenal. And Orbot's like, uh, boss, I don't think you should do this. Why <laughs> you? It's for the clicks. And then you hear screams and, you know, yelps and splorching noises and chainsaws and 
some blackened mess crawls out from the hallway. Oh, sorry, boss. I didn't have the film cap off. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. No, she's no, nobody, nobody needs. I just, as long as nobody's sticking stuff up where they don't need to be sticking stuff. I think we're good. <laughs> I mean, Sticks figures out it's an Eggman plot from the beginning, but Amy's like, that's too stupid. And then when <laughs> Eggman starts doing it too, it's like, see, even he's falling for it. And Sticks is like, yeah, that's how things progress like this. <laughs> she just, she breaks the fourth wall. Dang it, Sticks. <laughs> Meanwhile, Amy, Amy's not participating. She is on the sidelines this entire time going, look, I, I will warn you. I will tell you this is a bad idea, but you're not going to listen. So... I'm on standby with the first aid kit. I'm just getting a preemptive. I told you so, because if you deafen yourselves, I want you to know I told you so. <laughs> You're freaking riding a skateboard through a loop and launching themselves into a lake. Yeah. Yeah. Tails has the camera. Tails is filming it, right? Mm -hmm. Silver, Silver is constantly traveling back through time to revive them because whenever they die. <laughs> And kill themselves or hurt themselves to the point of permanence. And Silver's like, well, time to go back. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> Oi. Wow. He keeps checking the video archive of how they end up destroying themselves over and over. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they already did this one. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question is, is Knuckles Stevo or Bam Margera? I'm going to say both. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a little column A and little column B. I don't know. Johnny Knoxville. Sonic, I guess, has to be Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> Either way, it's just a freaking mess. <laughs> but it's very funny. Uh, I want them writing down a hint hill in a giant golf cart out of control oh no that goes through the loop to loop well yeah that too <laughs> only, only it's like halfway up and then falls and squashes them <laughs> and then you have silver appear from the timeline to catch them mid fall except he catches the golf cart and all three of them fall out <laughs> uh, yeah 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 pretty much <laughs> wow all right well we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and then we'll be back with more Bumblecast. We are back, and here's one from Nautical Nova. This one's a bit more random, but what would Kit's favorite video game be? If that's too specific, what about genre? I can see him doing some kind of resource management game. Like a real time RTS or some like Eve Online Sims or whatever, but he's managing like multiple accounts at once. Like he has got this thing mid maxed to absolute peak efficiency. And it's not like he's having fun with the game, he's enjoying winning and just having everything work just right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then Surge comes in and table flips it all. <laughs> or Serge comes in and tells him what his favorite games are and they're not any of those <laughs> what are you doing drippy nerd things that's lame how about we could play a racing game yeah of course <laughs> and Kit would be so very good at that too because he'd be able to optimize the routes and you know when to drift when to accelerate when not but he's going to lose on perp because he's not going to outshine Serge no he can't that is hard to say. Outshine Surge. Outshine, Outshine Surge. surge. Yum, 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 Sally yum. sells seashells by the seashore. Yep, she does. <laughs> Here's a question from Pandolce. What does Starline think of theme parks? Does he enjoy them, or is he one of those who gets sick in the first ride on the first ride they go on? <laughs> no, I think he does all right on the rides. I mean, he's done some crazy acrobatics, but with the tricor, but. He doesn't like theme parks. They're cheery. They're manufactured. They're saccharine. It's full of people who are buying into it. Yeah. Except for Eggman Land. I was going to say, like, he is a simp for Eggman Land. 
<laughs> like he was the sole willing attendant to Eggman Land and Unleashed. Like he has pictures. He bought the postcards. He bought the egg bucks just so he could shop at the egg stores. He ate the food. It made him violently ill, but he loved it. And yeah, because Eggman did it right. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, come on, Pendulce. You've even drawn this before. You've drawn him in, you know, Eggman Land gear. Come on. <laughs> you know the answer to this one. His favorite ride is, it is, it is know, funny. a small world where it's a bunch of little Eggman animatronics saying, it belongs to me, it belongs to me, it belongs to me, it belongs to me. <laughs> you belong to me, they belong to me, everything belongs to me. I like it. <laughs> Here's a question from Scurvy Pirate Hog. Two of my all-time favorite villains are Eggman from Sonic and the Joker from Batman. I love them. But one thing I noticed is that they both have a fondness for evil, deadly amusement parks. So if the two of them teamed up to create their own evil, deadly combo amusement park, what would the place be like? Uh, a death trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think they would run into friction on what kind of death trap. Yes. Because Joker would want something that's built off of the dilapidated side of things. Yeah. He wants the ironic death trap. Eggman wants something that's fully functional. Yeah. I mean, they might agree on the general aesthetic. It needs to be bright. It needs to be colorful. It needs to be lethal. But Joker's more akin to, they need to be frightened and somewhat aware of the death going to be a punchline where Eggman just wants to show off his technical prowess. Right. I can see it. Maybe like Joker follows Eggman, like say Eggman land, you know, Sonic defeats Eggman, Eggman lands abandoned, partially destroyed, and then Joker moves into it. I can see that. <laughs> the only thing he doesn't touch is the teacup ride where all the teacups are full of molten metal that just shoot sparks everywhere. <laughs> that's top notch. Full marks on that one. He loves it. That's metal as heck, man. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> you could even say it's my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not bad Mark Hamill Joker there. <laughs> Once again, you are too talented for me. Uh, the ball's on the green, but it ain't quite a hole in one. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not exact, but man, it's pretty good. It's better than I could do. I can't do voices, as we've established. I can barely do my own. I wasn't expecting you to actually laugh at that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah the, the, the your joker inflection is pretty dang sp almost spot on it's pretty good <sighs> anyway. dollar store mark hamill yeah well you know at least it's still mark hamill yeah <laughs> here's a question from steph cube i more than anyone want to see the comic book characters like tangle in the main sonic games but i think it wouldn't be right for him to treat her like an old friend because a lot of sonic fans don't read the comics and I know these are very accessible, but only if you speak English. Those of us who speak Spanish, for example, only have the first two volumes translated into that language. In fact, many of the thousands of fans that Sonic has in places like Latin America don't know that these comics even exist, much less know about the characters. My question is, how would you introduce Tangle or any of the other comic book characters into the game so that said fans aren't confused to see a new friend of Sonic come out of nowhere? Fair point, but I think that at this juncture... Like someone like Tangle or Whisper could be treated almost in the same vein as like Blaze or Silver. Cause when was when was the last time we had a mainline title with them as a major narrative figure? At least over like, an, over a decade. For Silver's case, it was a decade and a half ago. It's yeah. Right. Like I mean, sure they showed up as multiple characters like the Olympic games or the racing games, but stuff like rivals sonic rush it's been a long time so these characters outside of the fandom have become kind of obscure so it would be i would have to i would approach them in the same way in that you know assume that not everyone is up to date on their sonic and use a simple introduction to bring them into the fold you know oh blaze i haven't seen you since x you still cool? Yeah, and go from there. You know, Tangle, neat. We haven't, you know, partied since that other time. And just roll with it. Because the crux of their interaction is that they know each other and they're friends on an adventure. 
unless it's like deeply integral to the main plot line, I don't think you need a more in-depth introduction for the characters than that. And if there is a more in-depth introduction, then obviously you need to spend more time setting it up, but that's going to be for any character. Right. And, and oh, go ahead. To be perfectly honest, between the two of them, Blaze is more likely to be integral to a plot than Tangle. Tangle is very much the, oh, long time no see type of introduction, you know? Yep. I mean, we've also got the internet, so, you know, if you look up Sonic, you're going to find the characters. So I'm not saying that, you know, it's like a given conclusion that, oh, everyone's on the internet, obviously. So they've all seen these characters before. They know, but, you know, we're we're dealing a bit more with a universally international integrated franchise than before you know it's not like every region has its own entirely different canon or anything no. anymore in the same way at least but you don't want to rely on your consumer taking the time to do research just to enjoy the product right right i'm not saying that but you know just like at least even if you're like it's just a casual sonic fan who's looked up stuff on wikipedia or whatnot you know you might see them you might you might see them in in passing at least so they're recognizable i mean like in frontier's case and no spoilers here but each of the characters sonic interacts with there's a lot of deep cuts yeah in terms of references but the core to their story their personal arcs are self-contained within the game you may not get all the nuance. You may come away going, huh, I wonder what that meant. But you will understand that core interaction. You will get what the story is saying. Right. And that should be the first goal. Yeah. I think in a lot of ways, fans might be overthinking this. Like, you know, think about how Rouge was introduced. She just kind of just was kind of there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like, she didn't have much of a buildup or an introduction. She was just kind of there. And Shadow spoke of her like sh- he knew who she was. So. Now I know who you are, Rouge the Bat. You're the famous spy, Rouge the Bat. <laughs> Pretty much. It's like. I should have seen it coming a mile away. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's. She just, just kind of is. Like, look how Knuckles was introduced. He just pops up out of the ground and steals the Chaos Emerald. What a freaking jerk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but to be fair, the classic stories are a little simpler than that. I, I am I know, I know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, you know, you don't really need to go super in depth on a character introduction. I mean and you can reveal more about their character over time too. Like, look at how Chip worked out. Like, you know. Yeah. It all depends on, you know, what the nature of the game is and what the story is. So we'll cross that bridge if and when we come to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Amy was just kind of there. She just got introduced, thrown in like, oh, here's the here's a girl who's just obsessed with Sonic and follows him around everywhere. All right. Whatever. (laughs) She's never appeared before, but here she is. All right. (laughs) I mean, Sonic was just kind of there, you know, they just. He just popped up on the title screen, and there he was. It was Sonic the Hedgehog. All right. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Don't need to... Don't really need to worry too much about the inter- introductions. Just just roll with it, you know. Here's one from the internet person. Are Metal City and or Monopole part of the United Federation? In Free Riders, they state that Gun was investigating there, and they mainly work in the United Federation. And there is Sonic Channel art of Knuckles riding the Station Square train to Metal City. The 2000s had a lot of cities in the United Federation, so I was wondering if that's the case here. Uh, yeah, that's what I figure. I mean, if it's a major metropolitan area, it's more than likely within the UF's territory. All right, sounds good. Here's a question from the Imagine Breaker. One, two, one, two, one, two. I've been doing some research on Sonic Boom, and according to Big Red Buttons and Sega's announcement video and interview, it's not a separate or new canon or a replacement of the game's canon or universe, but a different branch of it. So why do you insist it's a separate canon? Because as you just said, it's a different branch. (laughs) I mean, it's kind of an alternate universe take. The... I can't speak for Big Red Button or their PR, but I think the intention there was to assuage fans' fears that this was the new branding of Sonic. 
a la Adventure One. Right. They weren't saying that uh, Sonic Boom was the new standard. It was its own Sonic. It wasn't replacing modern. It just was there. And it's quite clearly a different continuity, given that everyone has different personalities, different designs, different mysticism, different motivations, different tones, different mech designs, different terrains. It's it's different. Yeah, it's blatantly, obviously different. It's also defunct now, and Modern Sonic is still going. So, no, they aren't the same thing. Yeah, it was very much a spinoff experiment that ultimately, I guess, didn't work out, which makes me sad. Bring back the show. Here's one from The Cartoonist. Venture Brothers question. What are some of the best moments of the show that stuck with you, Ian, such as everybody's free season two premiere montage? Your powers are useless on me, you silly billy. And read that's epic monologue about the ticking time bomb. Keeping it vague for Kyle. Yeah, I've still <laughs> never seen it. <laughs> uh, God, yeah, the ticking time. Pretty much anything Red Death says. Just every time he is on the screen, he is stealing the show. And that's really impressive for someone who was introduced so late in the series. Uh, I'm having a hard time thinking of just like one moment. I just like a lot of the greater themes and traditions like especially early on where the show starts setting up its ridiculous premise and then in the last third it devolves into something so manic and chaotic that it's almost hard to watch but it's hilarious in that way <laughs> uh i also kind of liked earlier on it was more of a lapoon of the science adventure stuff your johnny quest type stories and then the show eventually evolved into a satire of superheroics and the kind of sci-fi convoluted greater nerdery, I guess, because you get G.I. Joe into the mix. You get uh, <laughs> some of the mystic Marvel stuff in there and then, you know, blatant DC Marvel parodies, all of which are hilarious. The friggin' names that they come up with for these characters. Like, there is a Daredevil spoof named Blind Rage. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, all right. <laughs> um, what was the other one? There was a, it was a, I think it was a spoof of the comedian out of Watchmen. So it's like a clown in various tactical gear. <laughs> named laugh riot <laughs> wow all right <laughs> i just and like you know the principal antagonist i guess to the whole thing the mighty monarch and he's giving his you know bitter and sad origin story and then dr girlfriend says you know you know it really is too bad you can never find your adoptive butterfly parents especially since they only lived for about two weeks and he goes what and this guy's entire MO is based off Monarchs. And he has no idea what they actually are or what they do. It, uh, the whole thing is based around themes of self-importance and delusions of grandeur and uh, systemic failure. And the whole thing like takes the piss out of itself start to finish. I think that's why I like it. It never it takes itself seriously enough to give itself its own stakes but doesn't take itself so seriously that it can't laugh at what it's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole thing is a really solid parody and it's, it's biting at times to be sure, but not, it usually doesn't feel mean spirited. It's like, we know what we're coming from. We know this is the material we love, but we also know that can be really stupid. So we're going to have fun with that. Yeah. And then when you step back and you try to piece together the incredibly convoluted <laughs> and intricate uh, timeline of events and factions and individuals, it's fascinating because it's that kind of old school comic book level of just nonsense. It's a rat's nest of plot points and characters, but it fits. And it's like, OK, I'm intrigued. I want to know how this stupidity works out because darn it, I'm invested now. <laughs> nice yeah I still haven't watched it no reason just haven't watched it yet you know it's kind of how things go so I'm interested so I mean one of the 
personal favorites for me is henchman 21's arc and that you think he's just going to be kind of like the r2d2 c3po reoccurring goof character and he becomes one of the principals by the end of it wow (laughs) but he never really loses that stooge aspect to a degree (laughs) i don't know the whole thing it would be interesting to revisit it start to finish now that you can now that it's all out there aside from the movie finale and see how it changed its animation style its directorial style its story structure Mm -hmm. and how how it all comes together and just how it continues to balloon and grow wow all right well i'll get to it eventually i hope maybe someday (laughs) Uh, i don't know (laughs) what i do know is we're introducing a new segment to the show i'm calling it the frontier spoiler zone (laughs) turn back now yes thank you you for listening abort abort yes if you are not looking for sonic frontier spoilers stop now (laughs) do not continue if you do not want to hear spoilers about sonic frontiers then uh see you next time (laughs) so yeah that's what i'm doing with frontiers questions now they're getting their own segment at the end of the show so if you uh want to hear them stick around if you don't Uh, We'll see you next time. Here we go. Into the Frontier Spoiler Zone we go. Starting with this one from Arc Fighter. If you can't answer right away, that's fine. But was there any carryover influence from Phage when writing Sage? No. Uh, They both have a degree of detachment. But Phage was always meant to be spooky and uh, off-kilter, off-putting. There was never meant to be a degree of humanity to her. Or what was there was just enough to make her uh, likable, but even more unsettling. They they were wholly different interpretations of the digital character idea. Right. And here's one from Cameron D. At the ending of Frontiers, I found it weird how Sonic and friends never took a moment to acknowledge Sage after she sacrificed herself to destroy the end. Sonic wasn't even thinking of her at all. At least Sonic mourned Shadow Chip and comforted Shara, Elise, and Merlina. Yeah, the ending played out a certain way, didn't it? Um, Not to put too fine a point on it, but there were some limitations in terms of time and staging, some of which I guess didn't make the final cut. But also, the focus of all those that you mentioned were uh, very focused on the individual and Sonic himself. Like Sonic and Shadow's duality was a big focus of SA2 and they were together there in the final fight and everyone was focused on Shadow's mourning. It, that that was the resolution was Shadow. Mm-hmm. Um, Chip and Sonic, their entire adventure together was the focus of Sonic Unleashed. You know, Sonic and Shadow, their companionship throughout Secret Rings, that was the focus. Whereas with Frontiers, Sonic's focus is his friends. That's what his main motor motivator is for the entire game is to rescue and restore them. So the focus is on him being reunited with them. And for Eggman, he has the moment mourning Sage because that's where the real core tie between the two of them was. Um, Would it have been nice to spend a little more time dwelling on it? Absolutely. But uh, there was only so much budget and things apparently were cut which i again can't get too much into all righty we got a question here from chonky pancake which is a great name i too enjoy pancakes especially if they are chonky when digging through the files of frontiers some fans found some voice files of sonic saying quote amy i wish i made up my mind sooner and quote i wish we were sharing an umbrella amy There were no captions to go along with the voice files, though. We were wondering if this is official dialogue that can be triggered during specific events as you explode the islands, or if these lines were cut from the final product. Were they added as Easter eggs? And can you tell us more about those lines, please? Uh, See, I can't talk too much about what might be cut content, but I'm not sure where all the incidental dialogue is myself. Um, Like the line about Tangle that's making the rounds and so many people have found, I still haven't gotten it to trigger. 
I don't know where it is. I don't know how to get it to go. Um, so I, from what I've read, it is every 10 minutes exploring the field that triggers some dialogue from Sonic. Um, it is only, but it's only like, if you get into any, uh, battles or fights with anything, then it resets the counter. Or if you go into any portals or if you do anything, Anything pretty much seems to reset the counter. And it's like, so every 10 minutes you have to wander wow. around. It's very strange how the way it works. Well, see, and, there was and also... it seems contextual based on where Sonic is sometimes, but not always. So yeah. it like... also seems to affect if you have the toggle switched for stop, if there's dialogue playing. Right. Yeah. If you turn that off, that's how I got a few things to trigger myself. Yeah. And I know it hadn't been 10 months between engagements, so I don't know. Yeah. So ultimately, it's... I don't know what lines did make the cut, what didn't, where they trigger. So it's very strange. I can't really comment on it. There is a mod for the PC version that uh, adjusts the timer down to three minutes instead of 10. And mm. uh, I've gotten two more lines to trigger with that mod. Okay. So. Suffice to say, that line and a few others from a specific set would have played around Uranus Island. Hmm. That's where they should be triggering. Uh, and I'll just have to leave it at that. I don't want to step on toes. Okay. And finally, we've actually got a two-in-one question here because these guys are pretty much asking almost the same thing. <laughs> so, first up from Cody G, Ian... How did seeing your name come up on the end credits of Sonic Frontiers make you feel? No spoilers, of course. Well, we're in the spoiler zone, so it's fine. I can only imagine how I'd feel seeing my name up there with so much of the talented Sonic team. And then Quaggle Gaggle Strokes and Waggles asks, How's it feel now that the game's out there to be on the other side, past all the marketing and promotional pushes? Do you feel any different, or does it feel just like another project successfully completed? Has it sunk in yet? There's a sense of relief. It's it's done, it's out there, and people are enjoying it. Yes. And that makes me happy. And, you know, that that's it. That's the end of the arc. That's, we're done now. The game is out there, people are enjoying it, or have enjoyed it, and I'm content. I'm already moving on to other projects. I have been working on other stuff, so it's kind of like, oh yeah, that was a thing that happened. But it's, I'm glad it's there. I'm glad folks have responded as well as they have it's been great to see the response i was as i've said before very uh worried (laughs) for you i'm like oh boy (laughs) here we go i'm just cracking up because you know a lot of people responded very emotionally the one that cracked me up the worst was somebody says darn it he made me cry over rocks (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I've heard a lot of people saying that they were they were there were some tears that was some front tears even. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <sighs> and but, again, I yeah. can't I can't fully claim that because that's the voice cast doing an excellent job. That's uh, whoever was doing the in game cinematic direction mm-hmm. who did those animations. Everyone had to come together to put, produce a final product, and I'm glad it came out as well as it did. Yes. It is a great game, but I'm still playing through it, so <laughs> I'm not even done yet. But it's okay. It's fine. I'm not really too worried about spoilers. And also, I've, uh, I mean, I'm up to Chaos Island, so, you know, I'm okay. pretty deep into the game already at this point, so I'm almost done with Tales of the Story, I think. So, dang, that song for the second Titan fight, though. Man, <laughs> that's a freaking great theme. Anyway, that's it. That's all we got, I think. Before we wrap it up, we're going to give a big thank you to all the folks over at patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko slash bumblecast, and our YouTube members who make this show possible. 
Big thank you to Daniel H., James K., Jennifer R., John B., Robotnik Holmes, Sam Cybercat, Samuel P., Torchbound, Mike B., Dave M., Andrew D., Salute Your Cat, Coupling Crew 128, J. Frost, Do As Diz Den, Hero of Light 13, Professor Scruffy Matt, Ryan D., Chris A., Noni Sony, Triforce Riku, John M., Jib, Don B., Yami M., Fionan M., Lee H. K., Lisa M., Invade Turbo Tunis, Ben Wolf Spain, Chevelle, Su- Sonic, 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 Scurvy Pirate Hog, Keeper of Monsters, Axis, Tick Tick, Xanderoni the Painter, Arc Fighter, Jonathan D., the name is X, Solaire Stain, Nimrick, Godzilla, Justin S, Quaggle Gaggle, Professor Rye, Alex GS, Ava Arctic, Cameron H, Dove, Daddler the Dalek, Sonic Legacy, Just a Mountain Soul, Pedanti Cat, Starlight Sec, Nando, Red the Supernamic, Twilord, Chad, Les, Jennifer H, Chaos Sonic One, The Discan, Jolene B, Alpha Monor Yukin, Joshua S, Omega Watt, Dapper Shinks, Preston M, Noah S, Of the Stars, Sonic 84, Kojiro Highwind, Awesome Cakester, Super Sonic Fan, Radri, Ink Thinks, and Tails, Chase L, Derusival, Callum Q, Red Wolf, Wild 48, Matty H, KJB, Miles the Prower, Navare, Exodel, Agent Kaz, In Zephyr, Four Sonic Fan, The Marble Gardener, Rhythm Raccoon, Mox, Chaos Shadow, Miggy Sawdust, Pig Dan 20, Ty Cyan, Owen BD, Vlad, Ozjams, Shimmy M, Puppy the Scholar, Curly Quills, Angela V, Crooker, Michael P, Indabin, Smiley 21, The Flower Garden, Sammy S, Delta God 77, Sterling Sonic, Mr. JF, Jube, Conga, Rocket Man, Wind Skull, Delonte, Supernova, Superior Pizza, Sonic Patch, Thigolf, Philip is Cold, Caswell, Mr. Mr. Murderbird, the giant murdering bird, Lacey M, Sandra B H, Crucified Demon, Loop D Loop, Omega Man 21, Phi, they seek their mother, she knows they do, Tetsu Knife, Dominic the Raccoon, Native Nerd 27, Jason G, Ultra Guy, Cody G, Crowbo, Sonic Mania 2099, Hedronis, Nils, Noob 600, Pele, Salato O2, Bug Party, Guts, the one dude who does things, Chicken Noodle, XL Hedge, Happy Times, Steph Cube, The Internet Person, The Imagine Breaker 121212, The Cartoonist, Cameron D, Cardio, Ryuko Shion, Sonic Bot, Peter M, L Technopata, Buttered Noodles, Miles Prower D, Frost the Hobbiton, Denny Light, Meta Mode, Wheels 2D2 Hedgehog, and Jamal S. Incredible list. All of you are amazing people, and you should be proud to have your name on it. That's going to wrap us up for this edition. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. Take care, everybody. Uh, uh, also, I like the way you spell Aaliyah, Chaos Sonic 1. That's not correct. That's not how you spell it, but I like it Very anyway. Interpretive. Yes. <laughs> wow. It sets it as autocorrect now. That's fine. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> It is this. It is A L E A H. But I had to uh, force correct my phone and teach it again because I'd keep, you know, texting her and I'd be sending messages to the great Allah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I worship the ground she walks on, but not quite like that. <laughs> I wonder why I hit autocorrects to that. Is that another? Is that a more common spelling? Ali, Ali? Huh? I don't know. Maybe. Is that a word? I don't know. No. That is spelled Leah. Uh, well, uh, kind of. With an A at the beginning. I don't know, man. It's weird. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, so. Half the time, mine just ends up being... I just go with L-E-A, but, you know. No. It doesn't make much of a difference. I don't think she cares too much about either one. You've been listening to The Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T-Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. That was you my said thinking. words that require thinky, so we're that, just gonna. That was my. Things. That was my thinky. Yes. Okay. I, I have no thinky. The, so there is no thinky in the drinky. Yes. I mean, do, do you understand? Do, do I need to explain again? I, or you you just move forward and I will respond. Okay. <laughs> no worries. Stimulus reaction, and we'll just <laughs> roll with it. No, nope. I'm.
I am like a sea sponge having been dropped on the pier. Okay. Oft, I, I just, mildly moist and devoid of thinky. No worries. I just wanted to be sure. So we'll do this one today and then we will do the other priority episode, which will probably be fairly short, if not any longer than this one. And then we'll do the, we'll knock out the minis on Saturday too. All right. All so. right. so I have until Saturday to sleep. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have until Saturday to sleep if you survive that long. <laughs> I have a lot of deadlines to catch up on. Uh, all of them high priority. Oh, well, I mean, if they're all high priority, none of them are. <laughs> We want this all done before the year rolls over. Yeah, great, lovely, perfect, marvelous, immaculate. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, I mean, you're the one who agreed to do the jobs to begin with, to be fair. Yeah, well, because I, I really want to do the jobs, but... I know, I know. Look, I, know. I can kvetch about <laughs> anything, all right? I know, I'm just giving you a little guff. It's, it's a beautiful, fun. sunny day. Ah, great. Better chances of skin cancer. I can find the cloud to any silver lining. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to both of us. <laughs> That's why we get along. <laughs>